Taylor's board. Today is our second part to our our stern bench project. A TAF so, seating, isn't it? Taff yeah, rail. TAF. Yeah. And Thanks for Graham. Graham Wright told us the technical name for it, yeah, which is cool. a TAF rail. I like T A F F uh, rail. And yeah, as you saw in the last video. Anyway, carry was, on. Yeah. Um, Weaseling in the back of my ear! Right, let's be serious now. Okay, go. So all we really did was... Uh, I could still hear it. <laughs> so all we did was measure the wood, cut where we needed to cut, and that was pretty much it. And that video ended up being like half an hour. Um, so yeah, I couldn't really make it into one part. But yeah, today we're pretty much doing everything else to the seat that we didn't do in the first part. So we're gluing down the seat, we're sanding it down, and we're screwing it into place mm. and varnishing it, which you'll see doesn't go to plan, and um, then finally painting it. So. Yeah, overall it went pretty well, and we looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah, we we'll catch up with you um, after the video, but I hope you enjoy. So to begin securing our stern bench, we mark out a few holes using a hammer and a little chisel. So after we've marked all the holes with a chisel, we want to begin drilling all the holes out. So a handy little way to clean up all the mess is just use a little magnet. So one of the holes proved to be a slightly more difficult than the others. Feels like a nasty bit down there. because there's a pipe there and a weld. Again, using the little magnet trick to get rid of all the mess. And finally, we had drilled out all 14 holes. We're gonna be using a Sikoflex to help the wood stay down. So, of course, we've got to clean off all that oil. But before we put all the wood together, we've got to make sure that all the joins are nice and smooth. But one piece wasn't going to work with just the sander, so we had to bring out the saw. Ah, oh, blast it! Not even the saw would cut it, so we had to bring out the jigsaw. And then giving that edge a quick smooth off. So as Dad smoothed off the joints, it was my job to put the bench all back together. And now to stick some sicker flex down, which will help keep the wood in place as we screw it in. After that, it was time to draw the screw in. But would these screws be long enough? Ah, progress. But just as things seem to be going smoothly, now, if you watched our first bench making video, you'll remember that we had a slight issue with the electric tripping. Now, today was no different. Yes, but it's our oh, one, well, our orange one probably. Not now, at the moment. That's Hey, 
hairdryer in there. You can't, because there's no electric. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get on the phone to them again, I think. For fuck's sake, man. So obviously all the joins aren't perfect, so to fill the joins we're using some Ron Seal wood filler. Now all the wood's stuck down, we can begin by getting rid of these nasty corners. So it's time to begin the long and arduous process of sanding all this wood down. As you can imagine with all this wood we went through quite a few sanding pads and just like the table making video dad looked like he'd done some roly polies down a bloody sand dune. Now let's not forget to cut the edge of our bench. So by now the electrician had arrived to properly diagnose the problem. I haven't me, finished yeah. that yet you monk. For me. Ah, time for a break. Things were coming on pretty nice. So we went out and bought this Ron Seal yacht varnish specifically for this job. Um, but you'll find out, yeah, we don't quite like it. This will protect it now. So while we're at it, we might as well do some TLC on the tiller handle. So after sleeping on it, we decided that varnish really wasn't for us. It just didn't really go with anything at the back of the boat. So we decided to get rid of the varnish by sanding it all off again, and then painting the benches red. The same red that's on the side of the boats. We've got to do at least three undercoats to make sure the wood is protected from the environment. So for that we have Dulux Weather Shield. So here's a nice shot of the table and the bench with a white undercoat. So the Ron Seal wood filler really wasn't cutting it. So we decided to use some of this wood fill as well. So before we do the next layer of undercoat, we've got to give it a quick key. And on goes a second layer of undercoat. So once the second layer of undercoat had dried, we gave it another key to prepare it for the first top coat. And then it was time to start painting our bench with some International Bounty Red.
After waiting for the first top coat to dry, we began the finishing touches by giving the bench one final layer of top coat, making sure to use a quite expensive Harris brush. And our bench was done. So we finally finished the, um, the stern bench project, which it's like the 7th of March today. And we did finish it on the 26th of February, but it took me a while to actually uh, edit this video and, and film the outro. Because for some reason we don't even do an intro or an outro to these bloody videos. So now we have to come back while I'm editing it and make the intro and the outro. Um, so... Yeah, we finished now, and it turned out pretty nice, didn't it? Yeah, it's nice. And we had warm weather at the time, re really warm, wasn't it? Yeah. So we managed to get it undercoated and, and glassed to seal the wood. I think, yeah. We all sat on it, haven't we? It, was, it ended up being a lot more work than we initially thought, because, yeah, we had to measure it all up, plan it all out, cut all the joints. Yeah, it was very complicated. And then sand down all the joints and then drill like 15 holes into the taff rail, which thank you for Graham Wright for telling us the technical name for that. Um, yeah, I like information like that. So, yeah, and then we had to screw it in, but this, you don't really see it in the video because uh, I don't really bring it up. And Dad repairs it after off camera but we use some um, I don't know two inch screws I think probably no, it's about three inch screws three inch screws but, but the half rail is quite a decent thickness isn't it that's two, about two inches thick yeah so it wasn't enough really yeah. to go in into the wood was there it wasn't really enough good grip and then you had to put weight on to the to the bit of wood as well just to try and get the nail in screw, um, screw. But yeah, it didn't really work out, and we ended up just taking all the screws out and putting in some coach bolts. But the coach bolts were a bit too long, weren't they? So you had to put in some little tiny blocks. Um, fly, yeah. Yeah. Underneath. Which is all right because today I've put a strip of stainless steel round onto those yeah, blocks. Yeah, so you can't, so you really can't see, see them. them. Um, but they're, they're they're a lot stronger. But there was a slight problem with one of them, which I'm not going to really mention, are I? No. I don't, want to, I don't want to talk about it. But let's just say uh, one of them ended up getting bent and it was a coach bolt. And so, someone only ended up in the Thames. Yeah, definitely not me. Um, so we had this horrible, weird wood filler, didn't we? Yeah, it's a really good make. It cost a lot of money. I can't remember what Ron's make it was. It was Ron's seal. Yeah. It um, says it's natural, yet yeah, it was... It looked like bloody brickwork. Yeah. So like, when we yeah. varnished it, initially it looked horrible because these the wood filler was just sticking out from every little joint and corner and it just looked so wrong and then on top of that the natural colour of the wood didn't go with anything else on the boat so mm. we then slept on it and the next day we came out and took off all the varnish by sanding it and then just painted it Under three coats of undercoat and yeah. three tops coats wasn't it? it's actually two coats of undercoat Oh, two coats. Yeah, watching the video back. I thought we did three coats, but we did two coats of undercoat and two coats of top coat. Three coats of the top coat. Did we? Yeah, I've put three on it. Oh, maybe I missed the last one. Mm. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it turned out pretty nice. It looks pretty smart out there. Yeah, it's that nice paint though, International, yeah. isn't it? Top lac. And you know, it isn't that comfy to sit on. Um, you're not going to sit on there for long periods, and if you do, you've uh, got the we've got these cushion uh, things that you can strap around onto mm. them. Um, but most of the time, when you're cruising along, Dad's going to be taking up most of the space, and me and Mum's just going to be standing up or sitting on the edge now and again. Um, the thing is, it's a nice route. You don't want it too big, the bench, because it's a nice space on the cruiser stone, isn't yeah. it? For the table, you can put a couple of chairs out up there if you want. 
And that's why we got that rid of that bit of wood in the middle. It's just taking up too much space. It's all right when you're moored up and you're on a wide bit of uh, towpath, and then you can get the chairs out and the table out, which we've got, uh, and you can enjoy it. But when you're on a narrow bit and a busy bit, you can just sit on the stern deck, which yeah. is quite nice. So in the end, we're glad we got rid of that old bit and put in these uh, this um, new seating. Turned out pretty nice. Mm. So yeah, that's the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, don't follow our tutorial because we probably did a lot of things uh, wrong. So this is more of a how we do, not how to do. Definitely not stolen from World Deck Diaries. No, I would never steal it from World Deck because <laughs> I like them. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe and check out our Patreon. Um, and also our Facebook and Instagram. We've got everything, I think. So, yeah, check them all out. Um, go follow us on all our social medias. And stay tuned for the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. It's cool, isn't it? Huh? Oh. <laughs> Monumental challenge for him. <laughs> All right. I've only got a little bit of second flex, so I can only use a little bit. And that's it. I've run out. Oh no! Hold on. No, I wasn't going to put Sikaflex on it. I decided to do it last night when I was laid in bed. Do you have to stop everything to look at the bloody bird? Terrible, isn't it? Oh, fuck's sake, man. The screws, oh, the screws out. Phone. You didn't, alright? Well, you get a proper tool to do that and see your finger. I haven't got a proper tool to do it. Something pointy would work. <laughs> well, sorry, your door wasn't, wasn't no, shut. Sorry, was that Dan? Hey, we put the light on. It was me. <laughs> you were still awake then, so I thought I'd turn the light on. It's a queen bee. Coming out ready to make a nest with a straight. Chicken back, freshness back. Chicken back, Good freshness back. Oh my god, it's getting gay in it, huh? How did that stop with the lens? He's just dropped all the sanding uh, pads, Mum. Hey? He's just dropped all the sanding pads. The sand in the what? He's just dropped all the sanding pads! No, in there. Oh, the frog ones, no. Did you like that? That's calling the geese. Oh my god, that's too close. Was that really close? I couldn't even see it. Run, you pick of the view! Run! <laughs> you have heard the saying, ruffle my feathers. You never know. Pretty much all we did was initially, you know, come up with the, the plan of the seating and the angles and cuts and all that we have to do. And yeah, we pretty much just cut it up and. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Could you just pause it a minute? What? Because <laughs> you just reminded me of somebody. Carry on, sorry. Carry on. <laughs> I'm just doing it by myself. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know what you're trying to say. I know, I don't know what I'm saying. My brain can't work fast enough for the words to come out. Okay. Ah. Ah. Right. Okay, I'll stop that. <laughs>